Before I start, I would like to thank for organizing this conference. I'm honored to be invited and I'm glad to participate on this conference. The main aim of my presentation is to try to answer the question what COVID-19 revealed about significant personal experience. First, I will define the main word and explain the theoretical approach. Then I will move to the methodology aids and present research results, concluding remark and practical implication. Autobiographical memory is a part of the memory of our own past. It contains memories related to a person's identity and therefore it's extremely important for the functioning of the individual and for an adequate sense of time. In order to achieve goals, it's necessary to know how a person coped with a similar situation in the past. Emotions play an important role in this approach because they are treated as an indicator of the importance of information. Studies on autobiographical memory conducted by Linton show that people are more likely to recall emotionally positive events. It also turns out that emotionally positive memories are recalled faster than negative memories. Bauer and Gottlieb indicated a tendency to search for, learn and recall material associated with mood. What did we feel during the pandemic? Scientific research results conducted two weeks after pandemic show that 80% of respondents felt fair for the health of loved ones, 60% of respondents felt fair that the pandemic will last a very long time, and 37% of them tiredness of the epidemiological crisis. Respondents also felt um, anger and guilt. Attitudes toward isolation indicate that older respondents, more often than younger ones, declared that they follow recommendations and restrictions. Residents of large cities, more educated and wealthy people, follow recommendations and restrictions more often than residents of rural areas, the lesser educated and people with lower incomes. Hopeful's theory is one of the psychological explanations. People who have higher intellectual, social and material resources usually cope better in difficult, stressful situations. Such people more often work in professions related to intellectual, creative work, which they can do online and often worked this way before the pandemic. They have greater access to various sources of information from experts and consequently they are conscious that social isolation can help control the pandemic. For psychologists, finding accurate answer to these general questions requires an analysis of personal experiences, thoughts and feelings. Have we really become more aware of the way we live, more conscious of our needs? Has the pandemic made us cherish our relationships with loved ones? Has lockdown changed priorities and goals? The approach proposed by Berntsen assumes that autobiographical memories are important because they relate to the current life situation that forms the basis of the ego structure which is so created by linking autobiographical memories with the sense of self, identity and personal goals. Maruszewski states that the autobiographical memories function are decision-making, its informative function, communicative function for enabled contacts, interpersonal functions, establishing and maintaining strong relations, motivational and emotional functions, setting goals and ways of achieving them. 
It can be assumed that not all episodic memories will fulfill these functions and not of them will be part of autobiographical memory. This correlation between memories and emotions is an essential feature of autobiographical memory. Until now, research related to the regulatory role of autobiographical memories from the COVID-19 pandemic has not been conducted. It means that the importance of such research is increasing more and more. The main aim of my study is to analyze significant personal experiences from the pandemic. I assume that the analysis of autobiographical episodic memories will reveal uh, significant personal experiences that may become a part of knowledge about oneself which will reveal an important element of the answer to the question uh, of whether and how this unique period changed us and what explain. As it turned out, the practical goal of the study was also the opportunity to express and share emotions. The following hypotheses were formulated. Hypothesis 1. It can be assumed that episodic memories which, were, which have been conduct, subjected to deeper reflection will become the basis of knowledge about oneself. They will have a greater regulatory role to create a positive perspective for the future. The second hypothesis, it can be as expected that there are differences between the group of respondents in the answers to the questions about what did you do, what did you feel, what did you think? Hypothesis 3 was worded as follows. Personal autobiographical memories support the following functions. I define the independent and the dependent variables which are strongly linked with theoretical background. The indicators of the personal COVID experience linked with sex, ages, education, are dependent variables. We have three respondents' declarations in the area of independent variables, thoughts, emotions and reactions. The indicators of the personal COVID experience linked with conceptual self are connected with self-image, ideal self, ought to self. The indicators of the various characteristics of the personal COVID experience is linked with the functions. The survey consists of cover letter, instruction, questions about the current mood before filling the survey. Part 1 concerned description of personal COVID experiences in the area of sphere of life, period, place, presence of others. Part 2 was related to questions about reactions and thoughts and feelings related to the most significant relevant personal COVID experience in the area of behavior, thoughts and feelings. Part 3 involved the questions about the various characteristics of this most significant COVID experience, which have the functions in line with Matuszewski's theory. Part 4 referred to the questions about the current mood after filling the survey. Part four, 5 was related to demographics question. The research took place among 125 students aged 19-26 years in a private university in Bialystok in the period from January to February 2023, who mostly live in the big city with their families. The respondents have completed secondary education, most of them working, but their professional activity isn't related to the sanitary crisis. On the first graph, it seems like no male participants describe the experiences as negative. The comparison between the both groups are statistically significant. The research results in the area of the first hypothesis indicate 
that people aged 19-26 declare that it has influenced the hierarchy of values. The more personal and negative the COVID experience was, the less it did not change the hierarchy of values, but gave them the desire to, love, to live differently. For people living in large cities, it was a new experience, inconsistent with the goals and important for future decisions. For people whose professional activity was not related to the sanitary crisis, it became a lifelong lesson. For people working professionally, it was an experience that was inconsistent with their goals, which did not change their hierarchy of values, but gave them the desire to live differently. When it comes to the participants' reaction to the pandemic, they acted indifferent, were astonished and needed to adapt. And how would uh, they like to react differently? They would worry more about family than about themselves. When describing the participants' feeling toward the pandemic, they felt anxiety, sadness and helplessness while wanting to be granted attention by others and feel peace and happiness. It was the experience connected with learning. The experience connected with professional work indicated that participants was stressed and scared and couldn't believe. Obviously, they would react indifferently. They would be less nervous and to be more responsible person. When describing the participants' feelings toward the experience connected with professional work, they felt anger and sadness while wanting to feel peace and happiness. The experience related with family life also indicated that they was stressed and scared while wanting to be more motivated and react more calmly. The participants felt peace and happiness, which is an increasing result, and want to feel hope. Based on statistical significance level of the man whitney test, it was also assumed that there are statistically significant differences between women and men in the answers focused on the three components of ego structure. The differences indicate that women experience more negative personal com COVID -ex memories than men, which is higher than the men rank for men. Women also engage uh, in more non-adaptive behaviors that are based on emotions, have more negative thoughts and unpleasant emotions. The results in line with hypothesis 3 indicated that the more difficult was the personal experience with COVID-19 in the communication sphere with relatives, the more difficult it was for the communication to start with friends and strangers and the more difficult it was to understand friend. In the field of motivational and emotional function, the more difficult was the personal COVID experience in the sphere with relatives, the lesser it was aligned with personal goals and actions. The results for the informative function are not statistically significant. Additional research indicates that personal autobiographical memories have a statistically significant function in the interpersonal sphere. The importance of relationship has increased with loved ones and with friends. The importance of relationship with strangers has decreased. When summarizing the results, it's important to mention that men declared more unpleasant personal experiences with COVID-19 after completing the questionnaire. 
my own research is supported by other academic analysis. It seems that information about the pandemic which provoked fair and analytical thinking could influence all ego structure. It should be considered that the respondents desired feeling more neutral. It became clear that in the first week of the pandemic, the Polish people were firstly motivated to help each other. After some time, the helpful enthusiasm turned into irritation and conflict. The Polish people mentioned the sense of inequality and inequity. Many studies showed that the Polish people often felt forgotten, abandoned, unloved, stressed and passive. Many felt fear, frustration, inability to cope and lack of help from the outside. Ending my presentation, I would like to propose the extension of the research group to include students from other countries and propose a question. How does the cultural variables differentiate the autobiographical personal memories? The research tools can also be extended to include the method of directed connotation, for example, by Krovitz, in which the tested people receive a list of words and then are asked to provide specific life events related to them. Thank you for your attention.